Okay, so this is a pitch for a movie that you could never sell. Uh, I could never sell it. And even if you, I could, you could never market it. It's uh, one of, I, I often find that there are certain ideas that only work as a pitch. And whenever they get made into movies, they don't work. Movies like The Village. Right, right. Uh, oh, yeah. The Giver yeah, does they, not work as a movie. They, or they work it works as, as trailers. A yeah. So they work as books, mm -hmm. too. Okay, so this is a pitch. And as a writer, one of the hardest things is the moment when you realize the ideas you don't need to write. That's the hardest one, man. Gotta That's the best go. advice Gotta I can give go. you. Yeah. So here we go. So this is a pitch for a movie. So uh, let's say... Chris Pratt's everywhere these days. Let's make some money. Chris Pratt <laughs> is a a former uh, he's a former Marine because uh, that's what is important in movies right now is that everyone's a veteran. So he's a guy who's worked with the Navy SEALs. He was in the Marines. He's been heavily 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 awarded. He does mainly underwater rescue. He's basically uh, Michael Bean's character in The Abyss. Sweet, yeah. but he's not crazy. He's just like a guy who's sent, and he is. Really bummed out because he got an injury, a leg injury that still hurts every day. Saving someone, not in the line of duty. He's never seen combat. And he has a chip on his shoulder about that. But there isn't much underwater warfare in Afghanistan. So in this big uh, oil drilling thing, he's become a safety advisor for all of these things that are ruining the ocean. And he's super like sort of self-loathing, but he's going from place to place. And then they go, hey, you need to go to this oil derrick way down in the South Pacific because we were drilling and uh, we found some stuff and you need to go advise because other people are flying in. And he's like, what do you mean other people are flying in? And he goes, they go, other people are flying in. The non, we're Enron, but a non-Enron company and lots of intellectuals are flying in. It's like, what the fuck are you saying to me right now? So they go down to the oil dark. They were drilling at a point that's an axis point between uh, ge geological mm -hmm. plates. And the plates had shifted after the huge earthquake that caused the tsunami, and a number of things have been unearthed when they were trying to find the base of the oil platform. So Enron accidentally made this incredible discovery. Now, what's the incredible discovery? Well, here's Brian Cranston to tell us about it. He is a <laughs> <Yes>. geologist, <laughs> and he says, God. he says, well, what we're dealing with here is completely submerged under the this geological plate is a space that is essentially the side of a volcano that has been dead since pre-biblical times. And we're talking 20 to 40 to 50,000 years pre-biblical. That's when, uh, who do we like for this? Who do we like for this? Who can I pull? Who's a good actor, young guy? Ooh, let's do, uh, let's do that Dylan O'Brien kid from The Maze Runner. Uh, he's, no, too young. No. Uh, Michael B. Jordan is great. Yeah. That'll yeah. work. Right. That's when Michael B. Jordan comes out and he says, so yeah, what we've discovered is essentially part of a continent that through over millions of years got shoved down and under. What we're dealing with here is dinosaur times, some weird point maybe during the Ice Age that we don't know about, some kind of like middle of history, and then uh, beyond that, then biblical, then you know the end of the Ice Age, early humans, somewhere in the early humans area, a whole entire period of history that we have no knowledge of involving a continent the size of Australia. Sweet. So, so it's like, what the fuck is this? And that's when Michael B. Jordan comes out and he goes, so this is what we accidentally sucked up in our oil rig. And it looks like this rusted nothing. And he goes, this is forged steel. We think there are ruins down there. Yes. And they're like, Atlantis? That's yeah. impossible. This is incredible. Chris Pratt is like, this is a hoax. This can't be real. There, nothing could survive at that depth. Even the fact that this metal exists is ridiculous. But sure enough, they go down in the platform. These three guys, B. Jordan, Cranston, the geologist, B. Jordan, archaeologist, uh, and uh, Pratt, the, uh, the main guy, go down to this thing, and we beat a bunch of other characters. I don't know, fuck it, Marion Cotillard. Uh, so <laughs> was being buried in things well, let's, down. Let's put a couple, uh, a couple cats in there for Sasha, too. Yeah, yeah. And there's like a cat for alien effect. Yeah. <laughs> so we're now down at the bottom of the ocean in a thing like the abyss. Is this going too long? Because I, 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 I truncated gonna, a little bit, but it's good. I'm going to go Keep faster. Going. I'm sorry. No, no. Uh, <laughs> so we go down. We're in this underwater uh, p rescue platform, like the one in the abyss. I know, I know, but that's not the abyss. So they go down there. 
Uh, and on their first sojourn out, they go to the middle of the dead volcano. And both B. Jordan and Cranston die. No. Oh. Take Quite are, are, they take a they take a core sample from the lava, which is all rock now. And they take it back, along with seeing like wreckage of this giant structure laying on its side. Yeah. All this shit. There, there's this incredibly beautiful sequence where it feels like this, you know, uh, like da na 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 whole new world. Yeah, that's like big adventure movie. But then as they're going back to the underwater base, black shapes that almost look like jellyfish, and for a second Chris Pratt thinks he sees like this screaming human face in one of them, attack their underwater vehicles, kill one of them, kill half the characters we've been introduced to. Yes. Except for our three guys. And then there's still a girl, you know, a couple of women, a couple of other people. A couple you know, of cats. Maybe Cranston's a woman, I don't know. <laughs> so we get back. And that's when we enter the middle of the movie. And again, I didn't, I'm not spending time thinking about this. I'm not going to take your time trying to make it up as I go. But basically, as we begin to lose contact with the surface and these black shapes keep trying to get into our underwater platform, causing more and more damage to it. And now there's heat and light coming from down there. And Pratt goes out to look and he thinks he sees like fire underwater. And he's like, Whoa, but when he comes back, B. Jordan and Cranston are both obsessed with this sample they took. And it, it gets to the point where they fist fight each other. They lock them both up. It's like, stop. B. Jordan escapes. I'll get through it quicker. I'm sorry. We're now in the third act of the movie. B. Jordan stabs and kills Cranston repeatedly with a big drill. He then cuts into the rock and disappears off of the underwater station. There's no way he could have gotten away. Meanwhile, our remaining characters in Pratt are dealing with these black shapes that are using what look like knives or machete to try to like get in. We'll stay area, area by area, this place is flooding until Pratt is the only one alive. Fucking B. Jordan disappeared. He was obsessed with this rock and then he cut it open. He sees B. Jordan is in one of the outlying valves. He's gonna take one of the last escape vehicles. He catches up to him. And they fight, B. Jordan drops something and bites Pratt in their final fight as this whole room is flooding and there's a lot of narrative tension that I didn't set up because then B. Jordan grabs it and Pratt picks it up and looks at what it is and he's like, what? And B. Jordan bites him, grabs it and goes, you won't take it from me, it's my precious! Boom, puts on the ring, disappears escapes. The ring wraiths are now attacking the thing he's in, the escape vehicle. Oh he manages God. to escape at the last second. Just, he gets to the yeah. surface. He's all fucked. Pratt's all fucked up. He's like, you need to listen to me. There's some kind of civilization that we didn't know about. And, and they're like, you're delusional. You're under arrest for the destruction of the station. He's like, Michael B. Jordan is somewhere. Cut to B. Jordan all pale coming up on the shore of like Malaysia like this. And he has the ring and he's going you know, eating rats. <laughs> And then you see at the bottom of the ocean, the eye of Sauron has turned back on. <laughs> That's where the fire was. And then you cut to all, you just hear, rose. Like that in ancient Elvish. And as B. Jordan is sitting there holding the ring, orc arms burst up out of the ground all around him on the shore. New trilogy, motherfucker, modern day. Wow. Yes. So, uh, you know, Ace, the next time we have Max Landis come in, let's do decaf for that coffee. That was... Oh my oh, God. That's mean. No, that was great. That was... And, and and that was an example of how you really sell an idea. And that pitch, it was fun to watch you. To have you come in here in general was an honor was for amazing. us in Schmobile. We wanted this to happen for a long time. The fact that you came in here and pitched us two ideas like that, as icing on the cake, it was tremendous <laughs> to watch how the process works live in studio. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Mr. Max Landis, director yeah. and screenwriter. Hey, thank you guys so much.